We good? We are. Uh, Emmy nominee, something uh, that's forever going to be synonymous with your name. Uh, of course, that could change in a couple weeks uh, to Emmy winner. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, nomination morning and how you found out and were you up at the TV at like 8.30 in the morning watching? It's too amazing, all of this stuff. I can't tell. You know, this is my first Emmy nomination in 40 years of acting. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, very, very late, uh, but very deserved. So we're glad it finally <laughs> Thank happened. Thank you. On the, uh, I have to confess to you that I was asleep. Um, and I was awakened by a, a, a giant looming over me, staring at me with red eyes, saying, why are you lying there in a coma when you've just been nominated for an Emmy, you fool? So, otherwise known as my boyfriend, and I leapt out of bed, and we went downstairs, and we watched the rest of it. It was fun. That's great. Um, and kind of foreshadowing that Emmy nomination was your victory at the Critics' Choice Awards uh, for Best Supporting Action in Comedy. Congratulations on that. Thank uh, you. I know you weren't able to attend, so how did you actually find out about that, and how have the last two months of this whirlwind of attention and recognition kind of been for you? Well, I found out about the Critics' Choice Awards in the middle of a dinner in New York. I didn't go out to them, as you know, so I certainly didn't expect that I would win it. And um, I was interrupted in the middle of this very intimate dinner I was having. And um, they said, guess what? You tied with Alice and Jamie. And I said, that's great. How wonderful. It has been a whirlwind, um, and it's been delightful. I mean, I mean there's no way around that. It's a very happy thing. But let's make no mistake about one thing regarding my truest feelings. I am a woman of a certain age, and I am an actress of 40 years standing. And the great prize for me is the part. And to get to a part like Red Resnikoff at this stage of the game, it's as if God said, I think, I'm, I think I like you. Yep, I think I rather like you. So that's the heavenly part. Yeah, and, and not even just Red, who's becoming kind of an icon herself, but I mean, Captain Janeway, I, I mean, that's that's a, a very, you know, um, n not many many people in, in the business get two iconic roles like that, so. No, um, and, and arguably three, if you want to count Mary Ryan, but um, indeed, Captain Janeway and Red Resnikoff are iconic roles, and um, one could arguably say that they are diametrically opposed in nature and temperament, but I would suggest to you that there's a commonality, um, and that is their strength, their vividness, um, their longing to not only survive, but to live excellently and well within the confines of what appears to be a rather bleak environment. One is a starship, and one is the other is a prison. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, when you first actually read the script uh, for Galena Red Resnikoff, um, what made you say, you know, that role, that's me right there? And could you imagine that an online-only show would get the reception from not just the industry but from fans the way that it has? Yes. Well, um, when I read the pages, they only gave me two. They didn't give me a script. It was a bit like love. I've been in love a handful of times in my life. And it is about as uh, explainable as a rainbow. Uh, it's physically impossible to put words to how I knew, uh, both organically, imaginatively, and creatively, that Red was mine, that uh, she tapped into a part of me that had a real understanding of who she was. So it was a match, an organic and chemical match, and that, that doesn't happen very often. And it is. I mean, it's a passionate thing. It's just like love. And then I think this happened uh, to a, a number of other characters, if not all of them, because uh, of the pen of Genji Cohen, who happens to be a singular genius uh, in, in the business right now. Nobody writes like her. And Red Resnikov sprang from her pen like the glorious and vivid creature that she is. Uh, and Genji has an understanding of women that surpasses anything else I've ever seen on television. And also a sort of provocative, uh, empathic uh, dimension. I don't know how to put it. When you watch Orange is the New Black, you know that you are just an inch away from that reality yourself. 
and you want in just as much as you're happy to be out. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, you know, no no episode better um, better shows off what you just described about Red um, and Gen Z's writing um, its story as a whole as the episode that you submitted um, for Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series, which was Tip Punch, which, um, you know, is pretty much all about you. Um, and so was that, first of all, tell me about the episode. What, what I mean, obviously made you uh, submit it. And also, was it your choice or was it a group effort? How did you go about picking? Well, it didn't take too much. to. I chose this immediately. I mean, somebody said, let's go with the chickening because it's so funny about the chicken and the dream about the chicken and wanting the chicken and all the stuff about the chicken. is funny, but Tit Punch is red, and it gives her background, and you see how she has never been invited to the party. She's never going to be invited to the party. She's an outsider. She's a geek. She's a strategic genius. But she's never been a member of the right club. And you see her vulnerability. You see how those Russian women with their gold bangles and their little dogs and their laughter could crush her uh, in a moment. And in the same second, there is retaliation. And uh, Red is going to survive then. But I think in the kitchen, you see with my husband, Dimitri, as I fall apart in, her arm, in his arms, and that was really my choice it came to me absolutely the devastation of always being on the outside always having trying to catch up with them uh, never being quite in the lead uh, and so I I loved uh, that whole exploration of her you just see her awkwardness you see her 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 desperate willingness to get in there and the jokes about the eggplant and the, you know it's it's her funny little shoes and the way she cooks and the way she has this little husband and all of it and then you understand that she's going to do some business with these Russian guys and that's when the other shoe falls because red is many things but stupid she is not so uh, in the very last two minutes I think you see the Russian guys come in there's no way I can give them $60,000 to cover the wife's deflated tit, which I wouldn't anyway. Uh, but you see them carrying big black bags into my deep freeze, and I don't think they're full of Snickers bars. Do you? No, not at all. They're so big, very big Snickers bars. <laughs> very big, very big, and not as tasty. So I think that uh, Red took the fall. Red took the fall. I have three sons and a husband and a shop that I adore. The shop defines me. And I think something of a greatly, a terribly serious nature happened, and I stepped up to the plate. That you did, and you had a lot of really great stuff um, in that episode to play with. I mean, from the Piper storyline of not not feeding her because she previously had called Red's food disgusting. Um, we actually get to see how respected and feared Red truly is, um, you know, by, by Piper and by the other inmates. And, I mean, you have somebody shaving your legs in the bathroom while you're listening yeah. to music, exactly. reading a book. Um, you yes. also have, uh, as you pointed out, that incredible breakdown scene that you had with your husband, which was just phenomenal. Um, and, uh, you know, after he was explaining to you the ramifications that, that, would ha or that came from the uh, deflating the of the, yes, of the tip punch. So can you tell us, because um, previously you had spoken with us and said what a, and, and described what a perfectionist you are, um, you know, in, in your craft. And so can you explain to us kind of how, what your approach was with all of these different storylines that Red had in this episode and all these different flashbacks and whatnot um, to actually be able to do it in, in just a matter of like 30 to 40 minutes of screen time? Well... I prepare, and I love to prepare, and uh, I don't think there's any shame in that. I don't think it's no—it's not so popular as it once was. But I'm of the old school, and I, I prepare, and um, I think about it a lot. Uh, I think about why those words were chosen to come out of Red's mouth, and so then I have to make them my my own. And um, and after all of the preparation, I then just have to let it push the button. It's like pushing the send button, and I have to let it go. And that's the most terrifying thing of all. 
and also the most liberating because it's the high dive. And I really do that. I mean, I just jump because if you don't jump, the audience knows you're not really jumping. You're hanging on with one hand. It's not to the whole thing. And the audience, uh, I think that's why they, they dig it so much and why they like red. They know I'm jumping, so they jump with me. Great. Um, now, I, it's obvious, uh, you know, just from your voice that, that you're not actually red or in prison. Um, but what are, <laughs> what, are, uh, <laughs> what are some of the similarities that you maybe share with Red? Do you see any of yourself in her? Well, you'd be surprised, but we both are passionate about cooking. So that idea that Genji came up with had, I mean, just captured my imagination immediately. And now the kitchen is everything for Red. And so I could, I could just attach myself to that and immerse myself in that. The kitchen defines me in this prison. Uh, in the kitchen, I'm not only in charge and in power, but I'm giving back. There's nourishing. There's nurturing. It's food. Food is life. It's a, a metaphor for everything that is important in Red's life. Excellence, vividness, transaction, communication. I have my daughters around me. It's a way to make a family. It's um, uh, it's it's everything, the the kitchen. So that was that was a, a key thing, and that is that has remained the same. The kitchen is always the thing I'm looking passionately to get back to. <laughs> wow, that I did not know. So uh, uh, you you actually are a, a pretty uh, big chef there, huh? I am doing yeah. all the cooking. That's great. Um, well, the reception by the Television Academy was incredible for your show. Twelve nominations, the most out of any comedy series this year, um, and five individual acting nominations. Now, I know yours is the sweetest to you, but how great was it to see your other castmates, in particular Taylor Schilling, who I know you have told me before is you know you've been longtime friends. You played her mother on an NBC show previously. And you actually called it. You told me to watch out for this girl because she's there's, she's something special. And then you get not only her but Laverne Cox, Natasha Leone, and Uzo Aduba um, in there as well. Well, I love the way you put that because that's exactly how I feel. You said yours is the sweetest, but not necessarily. I think the sweetest at my age is to this recognition of these other women uh, that we did this as a collective. Taylor Schilling is a remarkable young actress and I would uh, be hard pressed to find another actor who can do what she's doing because she's dancing on the head of a pin and making it look pretty seamless and pretty easy. Uzo Aduba has created in Crazy Eyes an unprecedented character. I've never seen an actress do this before. It's brilliant. Laverne Cox, as we all know, has uh, uh, broken the glass ceiling and every other ceiling. And um, Natasha Leone has stole my heart from the very first day that I met her and has managed to give to the screen, I think, uh, a generosity, a vulnerability, and a, and a depth that you just don't often see. So I'm, I'm so thrilled. And I'm entirely, I mean, I could jump up right now, but I won't do that because it would be slightly embarrassing. I mean, I'm, about Genji Cohen, I can't say enough because there are very few bona fide geniuses in the world. And she is one. And so her recognition is just the recognition of an absolute genius. What was the, the reception like? Because I, I imagine you guys were filming at that point when you, when you all found out the news and, and you got to work. Um, you saw some of the pictures on, on, the, uh, on Instagram and, and all the other social media about the celebration. Was it just, were you guys even able to function that day with, the, the awesome well, I wasn't at work that day, and it was some days before I got back to the studio. But by then, we had all communicated by email. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody, from the producers to the actors to the crew, uh, everybody sent their love, their congratulations, and I sent back. I mean, it was one of those uh, absolute explosions of, of joy that you don't often have, and who knows when they will come again. Um, a surprise, but... The kind of surprise that happens when you take wing and you know that this is a, a, an unprecedented and unexpected flight and you know that it is being watched and you know suddenly you know that you're soaring and that's what I think is happening with Orange. Yeah, most definitely, uh, definitely soaring and uh, 
a lot of buzz still surrounding. Even after the second season is done, everybody still now wants to binge the third season, um, which <laughs> has everyone in. So, binging thing. Did you see the second season? I did. I did. Right what when did it, you think right of the down. second season? I thought it was. I thought it was great. I honestly did. I thought you and your scenes with Lorraine Toussaint and what she brought to it were were incredible. And I was going to ask you um, about that, and I guess we can go into that right now. What was it like working with her? Because, I mean, just seeing two vets on screen going at it in, uh, you know, spoiler for anybody who hasn't actually watched all of it yet. But Yes, this so, is a spoiler, but it's not a spoiler to say that Lorraine Toussaint is a great actress. <laughs> and it's not a spoiler to say that it's a great, great pleasure to work with an actor of her depth and of her size and of her courage. I mean, there are no holes barred with this one. And she was playing a, a character that is very, very difficult to play. It looks easy, that kind of character, when in fact it must be exceedingly specific and precise. And she was. And you, you follow these two apparently old friends down a crooked, crooked path, brother. And it gets very dark and sinister in those woods, doesn't it? It definitely does. Yeah. <laughs> she finds out more so than you. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> Uh, now, when when we last spoke, um, also just a, a few months back at the Netflix event, you said something, um, because there had been controversy surrounding Orange is the New Black going comedy instead of drama, as it was drama at the Globes, and you put something um, in a really great way that I don't think, uh, and I think kind of sums everything up. You said, we're slipping on banana peels only in a very, very deep and important way. Can you expand on that? Well, you know, Charlie Chaplin understood this. He really did. Uh, he was not only a comic genius, but you always found yourself crying. Because Chaplin, the clown, would slip on the banana peel in that floppy suit, and you're laughing, and as you're laughing, a tear is coming down your cheek, because, in fact, the pathos of it, the poignancy of it, is what brings us together as human beings. So these women have committed all kinds of infractions and continue to do so in their daily interactions with one another. but. In so doing, we are constantly reminded of the whimsical, random nature of it all, and that it's humor that binds us, and humor that also goes deep, 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 so that the very thing that we're laughing about suddenly erupts into, into tears. They're the same. They're really one and the same emotion, different sides. Yeah, that, I just thought it was a, a great way uh, of, of putting that. Um, right. And, yeah, and uh, well, a little bit, I guess, back to to your cast. You always seem to, in every interview that we see, or anytime you're speaking with somebody, you always seem to bring all of the recognition back to the cast being so close, and 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 why Orange Is New Black is such a hit. It's such a, a beautiful, diverse cast of women, large cast. And can you speak to? Um, you know, you've added more series regulars as the seasons have gone on and expanded. Mm -hmm. Is it is it great having such a huge community of, of people around you, or uh, do you long for, you know, smaller groups of people? You know, I'm aware of the size of the cast because I see it. Um, I know that there are upwards of 30 women. But you have to understand that on a daily basis when I'm shooting, I'm just doing a scene with one or two people. Red is not very often involved in large crowd scenes. I'm with the Natasha, or I'm with Piper in the bunk, or I'm in the kitchen maybe with Gloria. So I seldom have those big, big scenes with all of them. So that when I run into them, it's as if I'm running into them uh, for, for the first time in a long time. It's always fresh, and it's always new. But I know one thing, because I've done a lot of television in my life, it is this collective and the originality of this collective that is making this thing sing. You know that's true. I mean, Jen Houston should win an award for casting because she has called these actresses from the streets of New York with a vision and a, and a perspicacity that I've seen unmatched in casting. They are who they play, and we have that sense of belonging and belonging in and to that prison, believe it or not. <laughs> now, speaking of Let's Feel the Prison, um, who would you actually like to see Red be involved in more scenes with? Um, I can tell you we had Crazy Eyes herself on the other day, just a few days ago, and she said, 
no, by no question about it, she wants more scenes with Red. Who would you like to see more? I'd love, love to have more scenes with uh, Uzo. We've had very little to do with one another. And I'd love to work more with Taryn Manning. But how they match that up, I don't know. How do you get Pensataki with Red? Do you know what I'm saying? No. Um, I've had a good amount to do with the Latinas. I'd like to have more to do with the women of color. Um, I'd love to have a scene with Tasty. I'd love to I'd love to have a scene with Adrian Moore, who I consider a fantastic actress. Um, I'm working with Michael Harney, one of the world's great actors. It's so simple, so great. Um, and I understand that Mary Steenbert. Mm, Am I allowed to say that? Yes, right? You are. It's already out. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's, it's out. Is uh, is involved in this season? Although I don't think she's going to rub elbows with Red. That's to my uh, to my regret because I would love to to work with her. All of them. All of them. I want to work with all of them. But I really would love to have a little bite out of Pensatucky. That that's uh, honestly who I thought would be. A cool matchup, but I didn't know how, like you said, how that would, how they would integrate that, um, because the, they're just so uh, in different parts of the prison world. It seems like. Right, but Red um, gets to go wherever she wants to go. I mean, that's the beauty of it. Uh, there's a certain unspoken power and largesse there. I can, I can kind of go. So maybe I could find her. I don't know. I don't know. But I think that Genji has it all in mind. She's got it all stored in her mind. She's going to put them all together at some point or another. Let's go to a few um, fan questions now. Um, there have been many that uh, want to know if you're going to be appearing back on stage um, anytime soon and continuing to do voiceover work um, because you know you, you've done both of those in your career many times and have won several uh, awards for your stage work. Um, is there anything you have after season three wraps that you're thinking of? As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go right into a workshop uh, of a new play by brilliant Jenny Schwartz, who wrote Somewhere Fun, a play I did a couple of years ago. Um, I believe in this playwright, and we'll workshop this. But then I have to go to Africa, where I will not be performing. I will be on my stomach with my binoculars watching the Great Migration. That's really, I'm so thrilled about that. I wanted to go to Africa my whole life. Um, it's hard to do a play because then I hope that we would come back for a fourth season and we would probably come back around the same time. And I have a book uh, coming out in May of 2015, so I think that there will probably be a lot of stuff to do regarding that. Um, so t t 2015 looks like there won't be a play, but maybe 2016. 2016. And your your memoir, you mentioned that was one of the questions. Um, I, it's it, you're you were in you're in the middle of writing it. I understand. Um, I'm almost finished. And is there a huge chapter on the Emmys and the Critics' Choice Award? And will it be even bigger if you win? It won't even touch them because I'm going to stop at the age of 45. Uh, in this memoir. So we won't even get to Orange is the New Black or all the wonderful things that it has meant. Uh, but uh, believe me, by the time I had lived 45 years, it was sufficient unto the day. <laughs> so maybe there will be a, a follow-up memoir, but that's where we're going with this one. That's all right. Um, and we have a question um, in our chat room from uh, Lorna Z. And she asked, my question is, what is the first thing you notice when you read a play, show, or movie script for the first time? The literary quality. I read voraciously, and I know if something's good or not. And uh, I immediately I know if it's mediocre, and then I throw it away. And I instantly and instinctively know if it's great, which I did with Orange. And then I just take it, I breathe it, I kiss it, and I call my agent and say, get me this part. Um, another question said, uh, from Cinephil uh, says, I love the mother-daughter relationship that Nikki and Red have. Will we see more of that in season three? You'll see uh, a, a good bit of it at the beginning of season three, but you know we're only at, still sort of at the beginning. I think we're only on the fifth episode. Um, yes, and things intensify. And its importance to Red is revealed. And uh, also, uh, what happens to 
Natasha, I think, is 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 very interesting, very very uh, moving. I'm I'm not really allowed to talk about it because then it's a spoiler, mm. right? But it's it's harrowing, it's moving, and it's very unexpected. Uh, Laura Reinhardt uh, says you're an extreme inspiration, and we that that's been that seems to be the theme a lot in this chat here. Is uh, what the inspiration you are um, going from Captain Janeway to Red now? Um, who would you say are your inspirations? Who do you look up to? Well, I look up to a, a great many people, but most of them are dead, unfortunately. Um, I look up to uh, Stella Adler, who was my great teacher. She taught me the epic nature of life, to never uh, ever look at life as something average, uh, to be bigger than life. To understand that as an actor, that is our job, to fulfill a size that uh, the ordinary person either can't or won't or doesn't want to fill. Um, but we have an obligation to be uh, deep and uh, to be layered and to be interesting. And uh, we have an obligation to do it for love and to put passion before all things. Um, we have a need to be eccentric and in that eccentricity to elevate life just that bit from its normal place which threatens I think to to bring us all into a shadowy land you know yeah um, and then I had a final question this is a great wrap-up question uh, back to the Emmys so when you go, when you attend the Emmys on August 25th, Monday night, will you be wearing red, and will you have your signature red lipstick on? I'm not going to do. I'm not going to give you a spoiler. You have to watch and see. But I don't think I would le let red down. Do you? Because she scares me too. She does. You may not get back in that kitchen if you if you mess with red. Right. Let alone get that chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well. Kate, thank you so much for joining guys. Uh, best of luck on Emmy nomination morning and congratulations on all of the deserved recognition that you've been having. Um, we look forward to chatting with you later on again. Thank you very much. And you, I want to just say you have a lovely manner. You have such a lovely way. Thank you for this. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.